Hello to you. Today we are going to attempt to answer the following question. Why are storage users so stupid? It's a question that I've been asking myself for many years now. Because the more I'm exposed to their logic and behavior, the more I've come to realize that these are not smart individuals. And what triggered the making of this video is a certain Instagram rant that I've been exposed to recently. One that many people have seen as well because it went viral. And it contained all of the rhetorical points that I hear a ton coming from PD users. So it inspired me to make this video because it was in reality too perfect. The video was from a drug user who was complaining about the fact that nadis tend to reject people who take storage and tend to point them out as being freaks or as being people who don't belong in our community. And what was special about the guy, because he was truly a special individual, was that he didn't seem to be able to understand why. It boggled his mind that we wouldn't want people like him to give us advice or to just try to order us around. And his conclusion, what he was able to summarize at the end of his rant, was that it was because of jealousy. So to him, every time a nari hates, quote-unquote, on a PD user, it must be because of jealousy. And since this is an argument that I hear a ton, I thought that it was a good way for me to come up with counter-arguments to explain to you guys why this is not true, but also why the opposite is true, and why this is a healthy behavior for naturals to have. But before we dive deeper into this discussion, I must, again, for the sake of you being able to understand my argument, play the clip by the guy, the guy whose name is Big Mike Van Wick. Here it goes. And it's just because these fucking naughty guys are so insecure. You're too insecure to pull the trigger and make a move and like just make a decision that could impact your life. Like you're gonna have to be conscious of your health more. You have to understand that things are gonna happen. But guess what, dude? All of us are gonna fucking die one day. And just because you were naughty your whole lifetime doesn't mean you get a gold plaque on your fucking tombstone, dipshit. You just get a smaller coffin, man. Like, it's like to, to hang your hat on that and be so proud of it. And like, you're bad mouthing and trying to like, that's the number one insult that these lame ass people online who come after people, like when they have something to say, whatever trend, man, do some more trend, bro. Do some up the dose, man. Like. Okay, I will. So as you can see, it's a very short clip, but it contains so many fallacious arguments that I'm pretty certain this video is going to be fairly long. So sit back, relax, and have a good time. This is not going to be me just destroying the guy, even though I love destroying PD users. Instead, what I want is to give you, who watches me, a proud natty, a noble natty, all of the weapons to push away that type of rhetoric, because even though I personally think that all of these arguments are immediately, evidently useless and stupid, I also know that they sometimes land on people who are not prepared for that type of rhetoric. So, I want to explain, based on this video, why rejecting storage users and storage use is a good thing, a moral thing, and why this demand for purity that seems to piss off Big Mike so much is in reality a survival mechanism and not a sign of jealousy. So in summary, this will be both a free psychoanalysis for Big Mike. Big Mike, you are welcome. Usually people pay hundreds of dollars for these. And a good set of arguments for you to use when meeting someone that is trying to explain to you that being naughty doesn't make you better than them. What essentially boils down to trying to take away your naughty pride. Something that Big Mike himself says where he tells me in the video that there is no pride in being naughty. I disagree and I have arguments to prove that I am right. So first off, let's kick this off by focusing on the insecurity bit, which is the core of Big Mike's argument. His point is that whenever a naughty points out a PD user and complains about them or insults them, it comes from a place of envy and jealousy. Why? Because the Nadi was too cowardly to take that step, to do drugs, and therefore he envies the PD user. This is an argument I've heard a million times, and I've always disagreed with it. Because to me, it is not based on logic. This is not a logical statement. It is an emotional statement. An emotional statement that really boils down to projection. To me, it's projection. Why? Because if you think about it, logically and calmly, what does it mean? It means that 
A man who engages in risk-taking behavior is immediately seen as braver than a man who refuses that. And we see that with drug use across the board. I'm certain that you have a mate that when you go out drinking, always drinks himself to death. You may drink one or two pints and have a good time. What does that guy tell you? He tells you that you're a pussy, you're a bitch. Why? Because he drinks more than you. This is typical of idiotic men. Usually they put their life in danger or they go way too deep into the rabbit hole of drugs or hedonism and they like to associate that with bravery. They think it's very masculine. And to me, this is a projection. Why? Because I think that the true insecurity is to be found in PD users. And the proof is as follows. Who between a PD user and a natural has the ability to develop a body without the aid of exterior substances? The natural. So the natural only depends on himself. He only depends on his own pride. PD users deep down know that their muscles and their results come from the drugs. There is no pride in that. You cannot be proud of taking exogenous hormones. Some of them try, but it's bunk. And this is why when they try to argue against naturals, they project that insecurity onto us. But at the end of the day, again, I don't think that this is receivable. Since I don't think it would be too much of a reach to say that most PD users started taking steroids because of insecurity. They were not able to get the body they wanted or they felt bad about themselves, not enough of a man, so they jumped on drugs. That is insecurity 101. Then you could say that maybe the drug use fixes that insecurity, but it doesn't. And the way they argue proves that 100%. But beyond a simple projection, it's also a classical case of psychological inversion. So beyond a simple projection, it's also a classical case of psychological inversion that is so common with this type. And I personally love this type of individual, of deluded individual, because they tend to produce the funniest arguments. The one that follows is that apparently we're all pussies because we're afraid of damaging our health. So this is the true cause. We want the results of PEDs, but we're not man enough to take the risk and endanger our life. This argument can only make sense to storage users. If you met someone who told you that they play frisbee on the highway and they made fun of you because you don't want to do it since it's too dangerous, would you accept that as a receivable argument? How is that shameful to not want to die early? Again, you must be so deep down the storage rabbit hole that you have now accepted an early death as something that is beneficial because it comes attached to muscle gains. But it really speaks to the level of insecurity that storage users experience because they are literally willing to sacrifice anything else to quench that feeling within their chest. And no matter how much drugs they take, it never actually makes up for it. So they keep going and they die an early death. It is truly sad. But also funny because Mike doesn't stop there. He says it so fast that maybe you didn't catch it, but he also makes the point that apparently PD users are also more health conscious because taking PEDs now requires you to pay closer attention to your health. I don't know why he even said that. Again, it's very weird because it would be the equivalent of saying that someone who stabbed themselves in the chest and now bleeds everywhere has to pay closer attention to themselves because, yeah, they are bleeding to death. So it makes them more health oriented than someone who doesn't take drugs. How does that make sense? I don't know. Clearly, it made sense in his brain when he said it. But I also perceive some cope here. I think that he's saying that in a way to feel better about the fact that he's damaging his health. So he's so insecure, he's willing to put his life in danger, but not secure enough about that to admit that's what he's doing, even though he says that's what he's doing. I know complicated, we're listening to a steroid user, I hope you didn't expect someone who has a functioning brain. And the reason why this also makes no sense, and the reason why when you hear PD users say that at least they're doing blood tests, so it's fine, they, they have an eye on their health, all of that is idiotic again, because it's like if that same guy who plays on the highway told you, hey, I'm fine because I'm looking at the cars and I see them coming. And just because you're aware of the danger doesn't reduce the danger. It is still dangerous. So all of that to me points to an individual that is deeply insecure. And you see that in the guy also. He's your archetypal, bold, covered in tattoo, PED guy. There's a million of this dude, there's clones of this guy. And they all have the same temperament and the same mindset. They all have this fake hardcore mindset. I think you know what I'm talking about. Or they try to be badass all the time. 
It's funny because it's the drugs talking. These guys tend to be dudes who, who, before the drug use, were insecure, not super able to, you know, be open about the way they felt, not super confrontational, and they needed the drugs to be more masculine, which again, do you think it's receivable to listen to someone who calls you insecure when they themselves outsource their masculinity? I think personally that it's a hoot, but they keep trying to make this argument, so I had to destroy it in a proper fashion. And now, if you're a bit devious like I am, you could offer a counter-argument, a counterpoint. You could ask me, NH, if taking PEDs to quench your insecurities like this guy does is bad, then why is lifting to fix your insecurities good? I mean, I've made the point in the past that it's very important for young men to lift weights because you build a better body, a body you're more confident with, and therefore you're more confident in yourself and you become a better person. So what is the difference? Well, the difference is the point of this video. It's the outcome. Natural bodybuilding promotes health. If you lift naturally, it promotes health. Whereas enhanced bodybuilding promotes death. It moves you closer to death with every single injection that you make. This is the difference between an internal type of pride, the Nali pride, and an external type of pride that is usually correlated with high insecurities like in PD users. And this is how you produce a proper argument, not the rambling that storied users call arguments. This is proper logic. Why? Because it's based off of factual statements. You will notice that, again, PD users never use that type of scientific or logical arguments. They always rely on morals and emotions. They always accuse us, Nadis, of being insecure, but they never explain why. And that is because, as I explained, all of this is just psychological projection and inversion. And in typical fashion, they do the same thing with what I just said. How many times have I heard people say that being Nadi and all of that Nadi pride and Novo Nadi, the Novo Nadi movement, is all about morality, aka emotion, aka void of any arguments? A million times. But I've never heard anyone able to actually prove that's what we're doing. I've made hour long videos you can access in the description where I explained point by point using logical and factual arguments why being natural is superior, why we're factually superior. And yet, I hear times and times again from PD users and PD fanboys that our arguments are all based on morality. They call us jealous, they claim that we are Puritans, when the opposite is actually true. They are the ones forced to rely on empty morality alone because it is impossible to justify PD use on any other basis without being fallacious. And if you want proof of that, look at the one type of fact-based argument that people who try to promote PDUs try to peddle. They try to peddle the TRT meme. What is the TRT meme? The TRT meme is saying that taking a small amount, small amount of steroids for health reasons is justified if you have low hormonal levels. That is what a lot of people who take TRT or promote TRT are saying. These are the smart ones of the bunch. They understand that if you rely on morality, empty morality and emotions to push PDUs, it's very easy to counter that type of argument. So instead, you try to attach yourself to scientific evidence. That, of course, is also easy to dismiss. I've done that in the past. People who say that TRTs for health are lying, they're just, again, trying to move away from empty morality because they understand that it is baseless. Some people like Big Mike don't understand how foolish they sound when they try to use these arguments. Because eventually, that type of logic loops onto itself. I've shown that previously where the guy in the same breath tells you that Nellies are pussies because they're not willing to take the step and also because they're not willing to put their health in danger. But at the same time, people who take drugs are actually the ones who are not putting their health in danger. It's a complete fucking mess. And this is verified by, again, Mike's follow-up argument, where he claims that it really doesn't matter if PEDs kill you early because we all die one day. Steroid users have been moving the goalpost a heck of a lot in the recent years. I don't know if you've noticed. 
it used to be that they would argue that PDUs is not that dangerous. Then, because evidence was too plentiful to actually debunk, too many bodybuilders were dying in their 30s or 40s, they had to accept it. So they said that it was a tiny bit dangerous. And then eventually, people like Mike just said, fuck it. Yes, it actually is dangerous. Yes, we're going to die early. But instead of taking that and using it as a way to prevent people from making the same mistakes they made, no, what do they do? They try to turn it into a pride. It's the same thing I said previously. If you have no internal pride, you're going to rely on external pride. But because external pride and the pride of taking PDs is indefensible, you start to make up silly things to be proud of. Like, for example, here, being proud of dying early. And that is also indefensible. How are you going to argue? with a sound and logical mind to another sound and logical human, that it's a good thing to die early. It's impossible, unless you rely on more emotions and more empty morality, which is exactly what he did. What logic did he use? The same logic I've heard again a million times. He said that it really doesn't matter if PDs kill you early because we all die one day. Who uses that type of arguments? Drug users, I'm sure that you've heard that. You have a friend who does cocaine or maybe even harder drugs and he knows he's going to die early because it's inevitable. What does he say? Oh, we all, we all die. Like you die one day, you only live once, YOLO. Is that an argument? Is that receivable? No, it's emotion based. But very viciously, it's also a way to move the argument away from factual statements. They bring it back to the emotion. They bring it back to the only word and the only realm of argumentation that they can actually defend themselves in. And that is very telling. If you are arguing with someone or debating someone on a certain point and they constantly try to take you away from logic, Usually it means that they know they're wrong. But the problem, as I said, is that the guy, Big Mike, might not even be aware of what he's doing. And apparently many people were convinced by that level of argument. This level of argument that is both nihilistic and hedonistic. And I understand why. Because times and times again, young men fall for that type of arguments because they are also more emotion-based and not logic-oriented. And since it sounds badass to accept your inevitable death and to meet it with a smile, all of dudes are going to say that this is very manly and very brave, right? It's, it's machismo and we all like that. It gets the fire going. The issue is that feeling you get when you hear that argument is just a feeling. It's just an emotion. What is hiding underneath? What is the factual truth underneath? The factual core truth is that you are just heading towards a, an early and a miserable death. And now it doesn't sound so good anymore because it's not encapsulated within, again, that bravado speech that PD users like so much. A speech they like so much also because, as I said, they are insecure and they are deeply afraid of death. So instead of accepting that court statement, they like to tell themselves that it's cool. They like to tell themselves that it actually makes them brave because it's the only way they can cope with it. If we move away from the emotions, and we look at what the statement means. Essentially, what Big Mike point is, is that since human life is finite, then the point at which death occurs stops mattering because it would have ultimately ended anyways. So might as well use drugs and chase instant news gratification instead. If you bring it back to the world of party drugs, for example, it's like if you met a dude who did so much cocaine that he was bound to die in his 40s, and he justified that by saying that he would have died in his 80s anyways, so might as well have fun. To me, this is purely the mindset of a brainlet, camouflaged under empty bravados like the coffin reference, saying that it's fine if you die early because you're going to live a big coffin that is purely emotional. That is purely someone trying to make themselves feel better about their early death. But how does it make you feel better? What is the consolation in knowing that your coffin is going to be slightly bigger? I know that it's, it's not what he's saying. It's a metaphor. He's saying that he's going to live his dream and he's going to live his life the way he intends to and he's going to leave this world big. And at face value, you could tell me that this is deeply respectable. But is it? It could be respectable if the guy was honest about it, but I don't think he's honest because he's comparing what he's doing to naturals who do not want to actually have to face that early death. And what does he say? He calls us dipshit. He says that you're not going to get a gold plaque on your tombstone just because you chose to stay naughty. 
So he clearly resents our naughty pride that he opposes with his absence of pride. His absence of pride that is leading him to an early death. So what does he do? He tries to devalue our pride. He's trying to make us look like we're just doing that to feel better about ourselves, right? We're not taking drugs just so that we can feel morally superior and go to our death with a smart knowing, huh, I outlive the guy on PED, so it makes me a better person. That's not what we're doing. He thinks that's what we're doing, but this is just his brain telling him that because it makes him feel better about not being us, about not having our pride. In truth, men who chose to stay naughty don't do it for a gold plaque on their tombstone. They do it to spend more time with the people they love, to protect them and to guide them. And I'm certain that he knows it. I refuse to believe that P users are stupid enough to think that they are that important that we, the nannies, would refuse to take drugs just to spite them, just to be able to look better than them. Bro, I don't have to do that. I know I'm better than you. I'm going to outlive you and I have nothing to prove because I have my pride. PD users are the ones constantly going after us, right? Notice the discrepancy between natty rants and PD rants. Whenever Nadi complains about PD users, it's always about factual things like, oh, the guy gives bad advice or he sells bunk steroids, for example. All of these are perfectly receivable critiques. It's very rare that we rely on empty morality. But when PD users try to argue against our factual statements, the only thing they have is empty morality because they are wrong. They are on the wrong side of history in this argument. But I'm not surprised that someone like Big Mike would not be able to get it. That he would not be able to get that we want to stay in Ali to live a long and healthy life and be with the people we love. Because usually people who take PEDs do it because they're deeply insecure, but they also do it because they're deeply selfish. They are willing to disregard entirely the impact that they have on people around them just for the sake of feeling better or to get a trophy. And I think that the gold plaque analogy is a good example of that. That's a projection also. No nanny gives a fuck about a gold plaque on your tombstone because you're dead. It doesn't matter. The type of people that would like that, however, is P users because they are quite literally willing to die just to get a medal, just to have a medal for a bodybuilding show that doesn't matter. That makes them feel better because they think to themselves, well, at least I'll be remembered. But you're still dead. This materialistic pursuit of, of earthly achievement through the use of drug will not make up for the fact that you are dead. And in death, your medals have absolutely no fucking meaning because you cannot take anything with you in death. So between having an extra 20, 30, 40 years of life or gold medals, which do you pick? Which do you choose? Natties pick the years of life. PD users pick the gold. It is PD users that want a gold plaque on their tombstone, not natties. And the proof of that is also the big coffin reference. He cares about the size of his coffin. We don't. Why? Because we know it doesn't matter. What matters is the years of life that you spend on this earth, not the ones that you spend dead. And this is why ultimately PD users and PD fanboys arguments make no sense. Because they are the fruit of toxic individualism and completely neglect the impact of their choices on the collective. Whereas natties, such as myself or you or any noble natty on this platform, we are group oriented, collectivity oriented. We care about all of us. It's not just me, me, me. PD users are all about that. It's all about them. They only care about them. And this is why they always produce what I call appeals to liberty. This is their big game. This is their L marriage. This is their main argument. Whenever you try to argue against PD use, what do they retort? They tell you that. They are free to do what they want with their body, and therefore, this justifies their drug use. It's an appeal to liberty. And as you have noticed, it's also an argument that relies entirely on morality and not facts. And you know what? I don't disagree with it. I do think that they are correct in the society we live in. Your body is your own, and you get to do with it what you want. If you so decide to destroy it, it is your choice. No one can oppose that. That is absolutely true. But it is not true, however, is that it doesn't protect you from societal judgments. And that is essentially what PDUs are asking, because ultimately, neither I nor you have the power to stop them from taking drugs. 
It, it's again, it's a very vicious argument that I hear drug users use all the time. Whenever you mention the fact that maybe drug use is not the best for society, they immediately retort and, and fire back by saying, oh, so you try to restrict my use? You try to restrict my freedom? Are you a fascist? No one says that. Again, that, that's a straw man. No one is trying to stop PD users from taking PDs. I don't. I don't want PDs to be illegal. I don't want the government to step in and say that they are bad and therefore you can't use them. What I'm saying, however, is that you cannot do something that is thrown upon or even illegal, then expect society to turn a blind eye or to not care. You cannot be freed from judgment. And I think that asking that, asking to be spared, is a clear sign of weakness and insecurity because at the end of the day, if these men were so confident about their choices and their drug use, why would other people questioning them be an issue? What if you're such a badass and you're willing to die early? Why is this video a problem? Why will I end up with a ton of PD fanboys and users in my comments who miss the point, use empty morality to fire back, and don't seem to quite understand that the only thing I'm doing is asking questions? And yes, I'm also judging you while I do that because I get to judge you. It is my freedom to judge your use so as to make sure that your use isn't a poor influence on society. This mindset, this attempt at being free from judgment is typical of insecure people, as I said, but it's also typical of cry bullies. It's these people who are both the victim and the offender at the same time. On the one hand, they act all cocky, and on the other, they position themselves as victims. This is typical of PDUs as well. They are always like this. They always have this macho, bravado attitude about them, but whenever they are faced with factual arguments, they recall back and they say, oh, you're trying to restrict my freedom. I'm a poor me. I'm a victim of Nadi. It's like, you, ha you have to pick. You can't be both. Like this big Mike guy, bold guy, like big guy with tattoos. Okay, you want to be this guy, good. But you can't switch back to a victim mentality whenever it, you, you see fit, whenever it actually helps. Why do these people do that? Well, again, because when you position yourself as a victim, you kill every single argument that is fired at you because you present these arguments as attacks and therefore you shift the argument from a factual and scientific one to one based entirely on morality. And this loops back to this appeal to liberty that PD users love to use whenever you attack them. They like to pretend that they're victims and they just want to be left alone. They just want to be able to enjoy their freedom. But that's bullshit. What they want is the ability to sell us products and profit from our community in impunity. Because 99% of the people who follow PD users are natural lifters. So it's important that this is clearly established. PD users who play the victim when they are being criticized on their use are misdirecting the argument. They are not without fault, they have been attacked because of their behavior. No one cares that they're doing PEDs. The only thing we ask of them is that they stop lying and that they leave us, the natural community, alone. We are not calling them out out of jealousy, we are calling them out out of necessity because we perceive the damage that they inflict on our community. And by calling out, I don't mean nadi or not. Nadi or not are also a tool of PD users to sell more and to become more influent. But that's a discussion for another day. This is peculiar coming from people, individuals, who claim to be so confident. If you are so confident in your drug use, you should be perfectly fine with people questioning it. But if you're not, and if you play the victim, this shows that you are insecure, and also that you perceive the people who criticize you as a potential threat. And from this, we see two things. One, that these people use appeals to liberty to soft censor people by ridiculing them for attempting to uphold moral standards. It might sound paradoxical because I've just been telling you that the only arguments they have are moral arguments. But notice how I always said that there are empty moral arguments. They are void of any real morality. They only take the appearance of morality because they understand that it is the only weapon they have against factual arguments. True morality is based on arguments because morality is a system put in place to create a better society. And to create a better society, you have to be able to explain why your morality is going to sustain healthy and positive traits that are going to be conducive 
to healthy and happy individuals. And two, that their confidence is only a facade, as I've proven. Deep down, every PD user is insecure and looking for ways to cope with their poor life choices, which is evident with Big Mike, which usually leads to the types of psychological projections I outlined earlier. So now that we've established the psychological portrait of PD users and storage users, and we've explained why they're so stupid, the following question is, why is it bad? Why is it bad that they are so stupid? Why can't we just let them be stupid? Well, you see, it's because their stupidity is not self-contained. What they do is that they project that stupidity on others. If someone like Big Mike just told himself all of these lies to feel better about the fact that he's going to die early, that it's a stupid choice, I would be fine with that. But what does he do instead? He makes a show out of it. He films himself coping. Why? Because the bigger of an audience you have when you cope, the stronger the cope for you because you have people who corroborate your life view and who tell you, oh, you're so right, you're correct. It makes you feel better and it convinces you that you didn't actually make a mistake. But what impact does this have on the people that provide the emotional support? Emotional support, by the way, that is being provided for people who are apparently very secure with themselves. Again, it is laughable. Well, it turns into what I call lifestyle projections, where the people that are being exposed to the cope start to slowly morph into the person coping, which might eventually lead to them following the same path because as they provide the emotional support, they also start to get convinced themselves to make the same choices. So as you see, it's a vicious circle where the PD user and the PD fanboys feed into one another. The PD user copes to his audience and justifies his life choices, which convinces the audience that these life choices are not so bad. So they reassure the PD user that copes some more and they bounce off of one another. And what exactly does that create? It creates more PD users that are going to in turn cope, create more PD fanboys that are going to turn themselves into PD users, etc., etc. It is the old adage, misery loves company. And this is when I step in. As I said, if Big Mike wants to do drugs and die early, it's his choice. But if he starts coping about his poor life decisions by projecting to a broader audience and potentially turning more people into him, he becomes dangerous. What is the chicken dinner analogy? It's an example that I've created to make you guys understand the danger of such a practice. And I think this imagery I created is going to help you understand. So the chicken dinner analogy is a dinner table with 10 kids. And out of the 10 kids, nine of them are eating chicken, hence the chicken dinner analogy. Chicken and broccoli, for example, a healthy meal. Then you have the 10th kid. And the 10th kid is eating McDonald's. All is good, right? All of the kids have made their own personal choices to eat their food. One of them decided to eat fast food instead, junk food. So he's being less healthy than the rest. It is his decision and he gets to make that, that decision that is absolutely fine, which might create some jealousy. In a sense, the jealousy that the other kids might feel towards the one eating McDonald's is counterbalanced by their good conscience. They know that what they're doing is the healthier choice. So in their head, they're weighing the one against the other. Okay, this kid is clearly eating a better meal than we are in terms of taste, but we are making the right choice because our choice is healthier and therefore a better long-term option. So the table is balanced. One kid favors hedonism and pleasure. The other kids favor health. Everyone is fine. The society is balanced and healthy. But then the kid eating McDonald's start to talk, right? He was passively bragging with his McDonald's, but it was again counterbalanced. But now he starts to open his mouth. And what does he say? He starts telling the other kids that it was never proven that McDonald's is dangerous for health. Actually, McDonald's might be even better than chicken and broccoli. And people who say that McDonald's is bad are just jealous anyways. They say that because they're too pussy to eat McDonald's. What is that kid doing? He's trying to feel better about his choices. He's trying to feel better because seeing the other kids eat their meal is making him feel bad about his decision. But he's not going to get back on that decision because he likes pleasure too much. So what he wants is he wants both. He wants the moral high ground and he wants the pleasure that comes with McDonald's. But by doing that, what is he accomplishing? 
he's slowly starting to move the morality of the table. The table, of course, as you have understood, represents society. And what happens then? Well, the one thing that the other kids had that pushed them towards clean eating is starting to disappear. If the health onus is moving away and they are told that actually them trying to pursue health by eating chicken is the proof they're insecure, their pride in eating chicken, aka staying natty, is slowly being shipped away by someone, the magnolia kid, who is trying to take away their pride because he himself is very insecure in his choices. And if that kid is left unchecked, he's eventually going to convince all of the other kids to eat McDonald's as well. And now you have a table of 10 kids with McDonald's. The question is, is this table a healthier table? And is this table a less insecure table? No, absolutely not. The one insecure kid actually created clones of himself and no one around the table is doing any better. Actually, all of the other kids are doing much worse. This is why the kid eating McDonald's needs to get challenged. One of the chicken eating kid has to stand up and say, no, what you are saying is a lie. Eating chicken is better for health. We are going to keep eating our chicken and we are not going to eat McDonald's with you. And this is exactly what I and other novel natties have tried to attempt. We are trying to fight the rhetoric of PD users because we understand that their message based on pleasure and instantaneous gains, muscle gains, is very attractive to young men and the other kids around the table eating chicken. So it is our duty to make sure that this lifestyle doesn't become more widespread. Because if it does, it is going to lead to a worse society overall. And this is why it is key for normal natties who try to preach against PDUs to move the discussion away from the argument of pleasure. Because if you're arguing against someone who is trying to convince others to eat McDonald's instead of chicken, and you let the discussion be about what feels good instead of what is good, then you're going to lose every time. And this is why PD users also always try to move the discussion away from facts and from discussing health, and they always make it about the games, about how it feels. Why? Because pleasure is their only argument, because they have no argument. And in reality, the only way to argue against this analogy and metaphor is to retort that eating McDonald's is not dangerous. So essentially, it's to say that taking PEDs is not dangerous, in which case you can argue that, yes, if we all eat McDonald's, we're all going to do just fine. I hope that no one is stupid enough to attempt, but you never know with humans and you never know with PD fanboys. So now I think you better understand the point of this video and why the video by Big Mike is so dangerous. But I also hope that it makes the PD users out there watching me understand why this is necessary and why I'm not actually attacking them. I'm not attacking your choices, right? I'm the kid eating chicken, but I'm not trying to stop you from eating McDonald's. I'm not forcing you to eat chicken. If you want to eat McDonald's, eat your McDonald's. I'm not even going to be the guy who chastises you because you're going to die early. Hey, again, as I said, it's your life. The one thing I want, however, is for you to stop lying. Stop lying about what your use does and stop trying to convince other people to stop eating chicken, like Big Mac is doing. Even if you do it just as a way to feel better about your use, it is still absolutely unacceptable and times and times again, I will stand up and shut you down. And I think this type of video is quite necessary, especially the chicken dinner analogy, because it's going to help some of you guys better understand what I mean when I say that naturals are superior. We are superior because our lifestyle is more conducive to health and a long life, and therefore also a healthier and stronger society. So saying, for example, that being anti pds is moral is a factual statement. Anyone who attacks me for being Puritan doesn't understand morality at all. Actually, calling noble natties Puritans is an attempt at using morality to shut down morality. But in this case, it's empty morality trying to get after healthy and vibrant morality. At the end of the day, morality is all a matter of influence. Who around the table has the influence? I want the kids eating chicken to have the influence because I firmly believe that this is what is best for the most people, even the people who eat McDonald's because they might get convinced to eventually stop what they're doing, join us and therefore live a longer and happier life. Because keep in mind that, as I said previously, when you die, you leave nothing behind except the influence that you've had on this world.
Mike worries so much about leaving a big coffin that he doesn't pay attention to the influence that he has on others. His morality and his rhetoric will create bigger coffins, sure, but it also produces more of them and sooner. Whereas my morality, my philosophy, and that of noble natties everywhere doesn't. This proves that saying natties are mad at PED pushers for no reason other than jealousy is a straw man. We attack them because we perceive the danger they represent to our community. They don't like it because the only way for them to finance their lifestyle is to sell us supplements and products. They are essentially blood-sucking parasites who had nothing of value, scam us, and then attempt to shame us into not pointing out the danger they represent via appeals to a morality that makes us look like the bad guys. Always remember this when you hear a PD user go on a tirade about how bad natties are and how mean we are because we persecute them. They are the ones who need us, not the other way around. They are the ones who infiltrated our community all for the sake of making money. Not one of these motherfuckers came to us to help us, not one. They all saw us as a market that they wanted to invade to make money off of our back. Supplements, powders, all of that nonsense, it was invented by them. And what did they use to sell all of that nonsense to us? Their gains. The gains they got via drugs, they used to say that if we wanted to look like them, we needed to invest in their programs. We needed to invest in their supplements. All of this is why when we push back, and there's now a strong push back against them, they fire back with morality because they don't want to be expelled. They don't want to be kicked out of the community or they make so much money. This is why all their arguments make no sense. It's not just that they're projecting their insecurity. It's also that they're trying to protect their money. And therefore, whenever people start to say, for example, that PD users get all of their gains from drugs and therefore give shit training advice, they get quite upset and quite scared because if the gig is up, no one is going to listen to them anymore. They're going to lose all of their influence and they're not going to be able to make money off of us anymore. And if this takes pushing us towards the same direction that they took, aka PDUs, by lying, projecting their insecurity and coping, they'll do it. They don't give a fuck. They've already been taking your money and scamming you. You think they're going to stop at that? I mean, I'm not saying that they're evil. I don't think that any of them is smart enough to understand the social argument I just presented with the chicken dinner. They do it unconsciously, but it doesn't make it any less dangerous. At the end of the day, they're still doing it. And the worst part is that many people who are not on PEDs also join their cause. They side with them. And this is a mindfuck, but it's perfectly understandable when you look at psychology. How exactly did PD users convince so many of us to follow them, but also to defend them and back for them? Well, we follow them because they're the bigger, and we have an instinct to follow the bigger and the stronger. But the second part is the puzzling one. Why do so many natties defend PD use and get mad at people like me and call me a Puritan when I attempt to defend the natty community? Well, it's because they are bought into the lie of tolerance. They think that being tolerant of drug use makes them better people because they bought into the appeal to liberty that PD users and drug users always promote and always push. So you now have this almost hippie-like morality amongst natties who say, well, live and let live. Like I'm not, you shouldn't be proud of being natty like it's it's dangerous, bro. Like, we don't want to be fascist. Fuck that. Be proud of being natural because your pride is what defends your natty status. If you have no pride in staying natty, why are you still natty? Why aren't you taking drugs? What keeps you away from drugs is the knowledge that they are just going to take away from your life and that you are better off without them. But it also goes beyond that, right? I'm not, I'm not just saying that influencers are moral fagging. They are. It also is because they don't want to lose money themselves and they don't want to lose subscribers. You see, since the bulk of people follow PED users, if you attack them like I do, you're not going to be able to collab with these idiots anymore. And therefore, you're going to lose access to their subscriber base, meaning that you're going to lose on fame, clout, and money. And these people made a simple calculus in their heads. They thought, okay, I'm natty, so I'm going to be able to talk to other natties and get that user base. 
but I also sort of want more people and I want to be rich. So I'm not going to denounce people who are not natty, even though I know they're dangerous because I like money more than I like morality. I like money more than I like being virtuous and actually protecting the people that follow me, that are natty like me and that count on me to protect them as well. And this creates a status quo, a status quo that only benefits PD users, right? When a PD user complains like Big Mike, Big Mike, by the way, nice confidence that you feel the need to have people call you Big Mike, but I digress. When you are in a situation where a status quo is established, who exactly wins and benefits? The people in power. And since PD users have the bulk of the audience, the fame and the money, if no change is made, they benefit. This is why they get so rabid when you start to question their use, when you start to say that PD use is bad and that it's not a proper morality to follow because they know that this is a revolutionary mindset of sorts and that the return of an Ali pride is going to be the reason why they're eventually going to get kicked out because once people awake to their schemes, they're not going to be following them anymore and therefore all of what they've built is going to evaporate in thin air. They've invented this morality all for the sake of keeping the status quo, all for the sake of being able to keep their shops open. Whatever happens to people that buy their products, they don't care about. And this is what has produced this morality of death, a morality of death that is based off of nihilism, of hedonism. And that leads to the following question. Why exactly is this morality so effective? Well, as I explained, it's because people want to be tolerant. But it's not just that. People are always looking for their own benefit. We understand the benefits of PD users. It's to make money and feel better about their choices. But what is your benefit? You, who actually fall for that type of rhetoric. You, who liked Big Mike's post. I was extremely disappointed to see some of your names under his post. Liking it. You like it? Are you that retarded that you liked it? That you actually fell for this? Are you really that stupid to not understand what it's doing to you? Well, no. Maybe you're not that stupid. Maybe you're just young. Because, as I said earlier, this is extremely attractive to young men. Because it aligns with our desire to put on muscle fast. I can't blame you for that. I also had that desire. I still have that desire. We all want to get big fast. And this is the weapon. This is the secret ingredient that PD users have always used. As I said, the reason why they are able to sell so much and they get so famous and they have us hooked is because they're so big, we want to be big like them, and they're going to sell us the secret. But the secret is sauce, and you know that it's sauce, and they know that it's sauce, which is why they've created this entire cope around saying, for example, that PEDs don't do that much, and they actually work harder than you do. All of that is nonsense, of course, as I've proven, but it doesn't matter. All that it matters is that you stay convinced that this instantaneous gratification that you seek is achievable. And anytime someone like me produces a counter argument that is valid, you are going to reject it for the sake of following your desires. You are going to favor your emotions and you're going to keep listening to the new guy, the new PD user on the block, who is going to have this new secret ingredient to sell you because at the end of the day, all of their arguments, all of their marketings center around one thing and one thing only, and that is pleasure. The pleasure of growing muscles fast. The desire that you have in your heart that they know because they had the same desire, they succumbed to it, they took drugs, and now they create more clones of themselves. And this is why drug advocates are so convincing. This is why many of you liked Mike Post. It's because you didn't stop to think. You did not look at his arguments logically. You listened to him with your heart. You listened to him with your emotions. None of his arguments were of quality. I have proven that. But what they had was the pleasure associated with them. It made you feel better. There was bravado in his words. And all of that was enough to make you side with him. And this is true of anyone exhibiting pleasure-seeking behaviors. They know that what they're doing is not right. But because it feels good, they try to find a way to justify it to themselves. And in doing that, they also justify it to others. This is why they are dangerous and why a strong morality that is going to focus more on virtue and not the senseless pursuit of pleasure is so necessary. Because since the natural inclination of humans is the pursuit of pleasure, once this morality disappears, you end up seeing more and more people exhibiting pleasure-seeking behaviors, which are not conducive to a healthy and strong society. 
And what is that pleasure I was talking about? What is that thing that you expect? Why did you like that post? Why did you fit into his nonsensical rants? Well, it's because half of the people that liked the post, as I explained, just tried to be tolerant. So they fell for the hippie mindset of thinking that just accepting everyone and accepting that drug users are attempting to generalize drug use because this is what it is. This is an attempt at normalizing drug use within society that accepting this process makes you a good person. And you see that in society nowadays. More and more people are trying to get drugs legalized, are trying to normalize drug use. Why? Because it's going to be better for society on a factual basis? No. All of these arguments, these factual arguments amount to nothing. The real reason is morality. Being tolerant is good. Being open-minded is good. Drug use is perfectly normal. We see the exact same thing here. And then you have the other half, the other half that are just PD fine boys. There are people who want to jump on drugs, who are warming themselves up to the idea and that keep consuming content by people who took that step, who are seemingly proud of having taken that step and who are therefore helping them make that step as well. Of course, if you were actually able to analyze arguments outside of the realm of emotion, you would have perceived the insane amount of insecurity present in Big Mike's Wood. But because you didn't, the only thing you heard was someone, a man, who wants to be able to enjoy his freedom and who also so happens to want everyone to enjoy the same freedom. What a good person. Of course, it makes him a great man. In opposition, no more nadis, people like me, are seen as the strict parents, who are seen as the people trying to all the people around and saying, hey, this is good, this is bad. And no one likes that. Especially not teenagers who are in their rebellion phase, no one likes to be ordered around. And yet, and yet, as I've proven to you, this is the proper way. This is the proper morality that society requires. Not people who try to do away with morality by using appeals to morality. This is what I call the you're not my dad mentality. Whenever someone tries to restrict you for your own good, you are going to reject it because you're not my dad. I get to make my own decisions. You're not my dad. And you perceive that in Big Mac as well. The guy is, I think, twice my age. He's an edgy little shit. Half of his post is him flipping the bird to the camera, covered in tattoos. Isn't that someone who screams, I want to be special? Isn't that someone who screams, I don't like authority and I will actively ruin my life and body just to be able to be a contrarian and do whatever I want? These types are extremely popular with teenagers and young men because they're teenagers and young men themselves. They have this fuck responsibility, fuck my life, I just want to have fun mentality that is again based on nothing more than emotions. I bring in a factual and logical reasoning, the reasoning of a proper dad. But you're correct. I am not your dad. Because if you did have a proper dad, he would have taught you better. You would know better than doing steroids and ruining your life. But one look at Instagram, one look at TikTok teaches you that most men nowadays, most boys nowadays, don't have dads. They don't have proper dads and therefore they have no discipline, no authority in their life and no boundaries. They will do to themselves whatever. They will destroy their own life at the age of 16, 17 because no one taught them better. And because the very system of morality around them is crumbling. Crumbling under what? Crumbling under the attacks of people like him. People like Big Mike who now serve as surrogate fathers when they are still child themselves. The guy is a total mental midget incapable of defending his own life choices without resorting to morality. And yet, you are following him in his footsteps and you are heading down the same path of self-destruction because he's speaking directly to your most baseless instincts. And the saddest thing is that you are following someone who is not even aware of that because, as I said, PD users are unconscious of what they're doing. They're just vectors. They're not the pathology itself. They're just vectors of the disease. They're vectors of nihilism. They're vectors of hedonism. Because they themselves fell for the PD trap by following their desires to be bigger, so they followed their insecurity, but also the inner voice that told them that the only way to make it was to take drugs, and if they wanted money and fame, they had to take it, and they had to do it. That doesn't leave you without scars. You end up with an inner guilt, and it's by trying to silence this inner guilt that they virtue signal to a large audience, and by doing that, they infect other people which is my entire point and my entire theory and the conclusion to this video. 
In part one, I told you and explained to you why peer users are so stupid. And in part two, I explained the mechanisms in which this stupidity is being spread around society and the things that must be done to be able to resist it. But I can't do it for you. Again, I can try. I'm going to keep fighting these people and keep fighting their rhetoric. But at the end of the day, it is your responsibility to reject their influence. Because it is only when a big enough amount of people are going to reject their influence that they are going to lose fame, lose traction, and eventually lose the ability to abuse our community, to profit from our suffering, and to make some of us stray away from the righteous path, which ultimately, I also argue, would be beneficial for them, because less PD users would be created, and the ones that are already in existence would be forced to renounce their way and potentially reorient themselves towards a healthier approach, a healthier way of living. And I'm going to leave you with that. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.